How's it going, everybody? This video was filmed exclusively live on odds.com. The Die Hard MMA podcast can be seen. The full replay, we talk about UFC Vegas 16 from top to bottom with my special guest, Dan Levy, over on odds.com. Click the link below to check it out. We've got a weird circus act going on here for the main event, man. Jack Hermanson, you know, he's supposed to fight Darren Till. Darren Till pulls out. He gets a short notice replacement. Kevin Holland, the man who's lighting the UFC on fire in 2020. Holland pops for COVID. Unfortunately, we wish him a very speedy recovery. And now Holland has swapped opponents with Marvin Vittori. Vittori was supposed to face Jacare Souza next week. Holland is going to fill in that slot. And now we've got Jack Hermanson taking on Marvin Vittori. So a, a bit of an early fight here for Vittori, but it's not like he's coming in here on short notice. He's got a full camp under his belt. Jack Hermanson, it's the third opponent switch for him. This is going to be a hell of a fight, man. We've got an opening line here. Jack Hermanson is a slight underdog. He opened up even money. He's plus 110 now. We've got minus 135 on Marvin Vittori. I want to I want to hear your take on this one, man. So I just sent you a link on uh, on Twitter. Both these guys actually fought on the same Venator card. Venator was like the Italian promotion right before they got signed to the UFC. So these guys are very familiar with each other from the regional scene days. And now we got an all-European uh, showdown here in the main event. So I got to be 100% honest with you. I was actually kind of surprised that Marvin Vittori opened the favorite in this spot. Um, I think that Jack Hermanson has beat a higher level of competition. Now, I know someone's going to say that Marvin's faced higher competition because he's been in there with the champion Israel Adesanya, but that's not that's not the champion level Israel Adesanya he fought. I mean, that was uh, Israel Adesanya one fight removed from getting taken down by Rob Wilkinson his prior fight. I mean, that was before Israel morphed into the champion we see today. That was way before the Kelvin fight, the Whitaker fight, the Bohachinia fight. This was this was a long time ago while Izzy was still getting his feet wet, and the fact that it was a split decision still gives Marvin Vittori rub to this day because in I don't know what world those judge or that one judge lives in to score that fight for Marvin <laughs> Vittori because Marvin Vittori did not win that fight, period. So the fact that it says, oh, he went to split decision with Israel, that just like to this day gives him so much uh, rub or hype or credibility, whatever you want to say, because it should have been a clear unanimous. I mean, like he did not win two rounds of that fight period. But as far as this matchup is concerned, I feel like the guys that give Jack Hermanson the most problems are big athletic knockout artists, you know, guys that can really punk him out. Tiago Maheda Santos, he has the second most knockouts in UFC history. Jared Cannonier, a guy who who's knocked people out in three different weight classes, you know, he knocked guys out at heavyweight, knocked guys out at light heavyweight, knocked guys out at middleweight. I mean, uh, Jared Cannonier and Tiago Santos are two of the scariest guys in the UFC. And I feel like if you can punk a guy like Jack out, that's the way to go. It's just that when you're talking about someone like Marvin Vittori, I think he's solid across the board. And, you know, he, he is a big guy. He's a little bit on the slower side, but he's pretty well-rounded, you know, hard body kick. He's, you know, won some fights by a submission as well. He can also grind out the decisions. But he doesn't bring that knockout power to the table that often gives Jack Hermanson uh, problems. You know, he ain't no Tiago Santos or Jared Cannonier. And you want proof of that. He's only knocked out two people in his entire career. And you want to know who those two people are, Clint? One guy has 10 knockout losses. And the other guy has a professional record of 4-12. and 12. These are the two guys that Marvin Vittori knocked out. So <laughs> I, I don't foresee him, you know, being like a Cannoneer or a Tiago Santos who knocks everybody out. I, I don't see him being like one of these guys coming out here and knocking Jack out. So basically the way I see the fight going is that I think Marvin's going to come out very, very, very hard early on, man. I mean, Marvin's going to go right after him like he tends to do to a lot of people. But one of the biggest issues with Marvin is that he tends to slow down in a lot of his fights. Now, I know when he's fighting washed up guys like Cesar Ferreira. And by the way, I know I know Cesar beat Jack back in the day. But like 
Cesar wouldn't even win a second against Jack if they fought today. Cesar beat Jack in Jack's second UFC fight. Cesar didn't beat the top five contender Jack that we see today. But anyways, I know that Marvin can muster up energy in that third round against Andrew Sanchez, who isn't a top 30 guy, or Cesar Ferreira, who you know is one or two fights. It's not even in the UFC anymore, let's be completely honest. But when, when he actually gets into these tough fights, like against Omar... Uh, Omari Akhmedov, man, he was gassing out big in that fight. And and I feel like this is a fight with Jack Hermanson. Jack actually gets better as the fights progress. If you look at Jack's numbers in that Jack Array fight, let me read them to you real quick, Clint, because this is uh this is actually really goddamn impressive. So not only did he land, you know, uh, uh, he landed 256 strikes, period, but you know how many he landed in the fourth and fifth round? 50 strikes landed in round four, 42 strikes landed in round five. So he actually landed more strikes in round four than he did in round one and round three. So this guy, Jack Hermanson, can maintain that output throughout the whole five round duration. It's just one of those things that, you know, if you're a scary athletic knockout artist, you can kind of punk Jack out. You know, Jack has said publicly that, you know, he does struggle with, you know, he's trying to get the mental side of things uh, right. And, and I applaud him for, you know, being brave and letting people know about that side of things that, you know, he is someone that struggles with that. So my, my hat's off to a guy like Jack for admitting that. But to get Jack to that point, you have to be a certain level. And I'm just not convinced that Marvin Vittori is on that level. I mean, look, I respect Vittori. I think he's at the best point in his career. And I think he's just a kid. He was born in 1993, Clint. You know what I mean? I don't know what yeah. it means to be born in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> this kid, uh, Marvin Vittori, he's been, been, he's been getting better every single fight. It's just that he hasn't fought a top 10 guy uh in forever since he fought Israel and Israel, you know, that was his second UFC fight. So he really hasn't fought a ranked guy ever, ever. And his last fight with Carl Roberson, listen, I respect, I respect anyone that steps inside the UFC's octagon, but the reality here is how many times we've seen Roberson get submitted? How many times we've seen once, once Roberson gets taken down, he ain't getting back up. And Roberson had a near submission attempt on Vittori. Roberson even got on top of Vittori. Now, granted, Vittori can get out of stuff from Carl Roberson. I'm not convinced he gets out of those spots if Jack puts him there, man. So I think that the early going is going to be tough. It's going to be kind of back and forth. But Jack is sneaky, man, whether whether it's a guillotine choke, whether it's a heel hook, which we saw his last fight against Kelvin, which I did not see coming from a mile away. I thought Kelvin was going to whoop his ass. I thought Kelvin was going to keep the fight standing and tee off on him because I thought Kelvin kind of fit the mold of one of these guys that has the heavy hands that can kind of punk Jack out. I mean, and it wasn't the case at all. So I got to go with Hermanson here, man, whether he mixes in takedowns or not, because it's been a long time since Vittori has been taken out. It's actually been since the Carlos Jr. fight since he's been taken down. But at the same time, you know, when, when you're fighting the guys he's been fighting, you know, Cesar Mutanchi, who was one fight away from retiring, Andrew Sanchez, who is nowhere near the top 15, Carl Roberson, nowhere near the top 15. I understand why he hasn't been getting taken down. But I think that changes Saturday night. I mean, we're talking about a guy in Jack Hermanson who not only blast doubled Jacare Souza, had a deep submission attempt on Jacare Souza. Normally, we don't, you know, take much from submission attempts. We only take from finishes. But like to to have a submission attempt on Jacare Souza like that right there, I'm like, okay, you're you're on that top ten level. And then to maintain the output in the championship rounds and actually put up more numbers in those rounds than you did the earlier rounds. I just think the pace, the volume, the output, the mixing into the takedowns, the whole well-rounded MMA game is going to lead Jack Hermanson to victory here. If, if Vittori was a knockout artist, I'd be more scared, but he's not. I told you the two guys he's knocked out. I I'm going Jack Hermanson here to get it done. Okay. All right, man. And the, the people like when we disagree, you've definitely poked some holes here for me. I already bet Marvin Vittori. I've got him at minus 130, and uh, I absolutely see everything that you're saying, and I definitely respect your opinion here, and I, I feel like I'm, I'm seeing the other side just a little bit because I, I know what you're talking about with the power punchers being what causes Hermanson to get out of there, you know, punking people out of there like that. But the fact of the matter is he's he's been knocked out a couple times. He's been wobbled a couple times. I'm starting to worry about Jack Hermanson's chin in general. 
And with that takedown defense for Marvin Vittori, with his ability to scramble, his solid submission defense, I feel like we could see Jack Hermanson end up on his back here. And not that that's a bad thing because the Joker is sick off of his back, but I think Marvin Vittori's got that submission defense. You know, we talked earlier about the wrestling edge. We know about, you know, wrestlers being able to keep themselves safe under those circumstances. The one thing that Vittori really has going for him, in my opinion, is ground and pound. I know he doesn't have that clean, you know, one-click, God-given knockout power like Cannoneer does, but if the Joker gets stuck underneath this guy, I think he could be in for a long night. The only question is that potential championship round gas tank. If Marvin Vittori slows down in round four, that's going to be a problem for me. But, uh, man, I took the shot. I went ahead and took the shot. I think that... I think that Marvin Vittori is a kid that we talked about it. He's young. He's 27 years old. He's getting better. Yes, this is his first big step up in competition. I think he makes that step. I, I think he's making the right moves. I think he's in the right places. I think we will see him eventually get up into that top 15 conversation. And this is his first step to doing so. It's a, it's a big moment, man. But I, I feel like he eyed the opportunity here for him to say, I'm lined up against a legend in the sport like Jacare. Oh, but there's an opportunity to fight Jack a week sooner and go, fuck yeah, man. Like that's, I feel like he's targeted here. I think this is a man who he believes he can beat. And uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and ride him to the bank here. I'm going to back him and, and see if he can get this thing done for me. I may end up paying for it because I tend more to like fading people taking that first step up in competition rather than backing them. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sidestep that rule this time, and I feel like I feel like Marvin Vittori can get this thing done. I don't know, I don't know if he's got the capability of submitting a guy like uh, Jack Hermanson, unless it's a club and sub type of situation. But really, Vittori can win, in my opinion, all three ways this fight can end. I guess you can make the same argument for Jack Hermanson, especially if Vittori does slow down. But he's a dude that's never been finished, and that's something that that means a lot to me here in this fight. If Jack essentially out volumes him and boxes him up for a full 25 minutes then i you know i I will take my hat off to you but i feel like that wrestling is going to pay a factor yeah listen so i want to make a couple comments firstly you mentioned the ground and pound of vittori what what about the ground and pound of hermanson i feel like hermanson (laughs) actually made his name off his ground and pound i know he's been getting a couple guys with guillotines here and there but like his top control and his ground and pound i mean He's actually been finishing fights with ground and pound in the UFC. Vittori hasn't. Um, but, yeah, I mean, look, these guys are familiar with each other. Like I said, they I sent you that link. They both fought on that Venator card right before they both got signed. So maybe Vittori took the fight thinking, like, hey, I, I got something for Jack Hermanson. I'm willing to give up this opportunity against the legend to come out here in a main event and beat a guy like Hermanson. So maybe he sees something. But until – I, you know, oh, and, and, uh, another thing I got to say. You mentioned the chin of Hermanson. I actually don't think his chin is the issue, man. I I think it's actually more like a mental thing like we were talking about. I felt like in that Maheda fight and the Cannoneer fight, I don't think he was knocked out in either of those fights. I think he kind of just got bull rushed, said he had enough, was waiting to go home, got covered up, let the ref intervene. Now, when you talk about things like that, right away you're probably like, dude, I do not want to lay my money on (laughs) someone who does some shit like that. It's just... It has to be a certain opponent to bring that out of Jack. Like you put Jack in there with Israel Adesanya, Israel Adesanya is going to make him cover up and go home too. I'm just not convinced Marvin Vittori is that guy. I feel like when Jack has a mental edge over someone, that's when he wins. So I'm not confirming that he has one here. I'm suspecting that he does. So I I think this is that kind of fight he can win because there's not much of a knockout threat. But we'll find out, right? Yeah, yeah, we will find out. And, you know, man, like a a question about that, though, is uh, what do you think about the opponent changes? Like, I got to wonder, for a guy that may have those mental hurdles, yeah. having your third opponent swapped up on you, you're like, okay, fight Darren Till, low volume, big power, take the guy, you know what I mean? Like, you got a game plan in mind, and then you got Holland where you're going, ah, shit, like, this guy can grapple, this guy's got the reach advantage, okay, okay, let's bring him on, and then you lose him and go – shit now i've got this hard-nosed wrestler that's incredibly strong like you gotta wonder about those mental hurdles getting those quick opponent changes in succession i mean it's a close fight man at the end of the day it's a close fight there's there's paths to victory for both these guys and uh i'm excited this is a very very fun card in my opinion it's going to be a grappling 
spectacular type of fight because there's so many people who are so damn good on the floor. I expect to see a lot of groundwork this weekend. Uh, I think it's going to be fun, though, man. I think it's going to be a good one. Look, that's a great point about the last uh, minute switch up. I mean, definitely have to address that when we're talking about the mental stuff with a guy like like Hermanson. Hundred percent. It's just if the last minute switch up was Paulo Costa or Robert Whitaker, then I'd be talking about, hey, Jack ain't gonna like these shots. I just don't personally feel like Vittori brings that same power to the table. I could be way off. Let's find out Saturday night. Let's find out, man. All right, that'll do it, folks. That was UFC Vegas 16. We broke the thing down from top to bottom. You can find the replay of this show exclusively over on odds.com. If you came in late, that'll be posted up there a little bit later. Huge shout out and thank you to my man Dan Levy over here. Once again, you can find him over at Half the Battle. Dan, my friend, this was fun. This was awesome. The floor is yours. If you want to give any shout outs or you know any sponsors, anything like that that you want to mention, have at it, man. No, I just want to thank you for having me on, man. It was an absolute pleasure. Let's do it again soon. And also got to give a quick shout out and a big shout out to all your listeners, all your fans, all your supporters. I truly appreciate all you guys getting to this point in the show. Truly means a lot that you took uh, this time out of your day to watch us just sit back and talk about fights, which is something we love doing. So thank you so much to all the fans. If you guys are at all interested in checking me out, I'm on Twitter at Best Fight Picks. And I also have a show called Half the Battle. Just search for that anywhere podcasts are found. That's Half the Battle. Thank you guys again. And thank you, Clint.